This is an interactive audio experience by Made by Mortals. Performed and created by a group of people with lived experience of domestic abuse and a passion for change and creativity. Through listening to this, you will learn a little bit about the people who created it. You will also discover Kerry. Kerry is 37 years old. She's a mother to three young boys and lives in a two-bedroom council house. You will hear the voices of Lana, Joanne, Angela, Jill, Leanne. My name is Francesca. I will be your guide throughout this audio experience. Together, we will step into Kerry's world. During the next 15 minutes, you will hear music and sounds from Kerry's world to heighten your listening experience. Throughout the podcast, I will ask you to imagine that we're with Kerry, where Kerry lives. You were invited to journey through your home, but it will also be Kerry's home. You will be invited to see things with your own mind and your own imagination. Sometimes I will invite you to speak out loud. I will leave space to do that. Sometimes I will invite you to move around. Walk in Kerry's shoes. Are you ready? Let's start our journey. It's only 15 minutes and then it will be over. Listener, I invite you to stand in the entrance to your kitchen. It will still be your kitchen, but it also will be Kerry's kitchen. What do you see? Cluttered, 15 jars of honey and jam on the side, all open. A pile of clean dishes on the side to be put away, always. Nice to look out and watch the birds pottering. It's the best kitchen I've ever had, still Christmas clean. Only the cat sits behind the kettle to keep warm. There's a smell of rotten fruit. The fruit bowl is barely touched when there's chocolate. Unfinished. There's a big hole in the ceiling from a bathroom leak. No flooring. It does look nice when it's tidy. It's small. It's crammed. It needs decorating, but I love it because it's a family place. Narrow, a long window that looks into the yard, juice on top of the fridge, cereal on top of the cupboards, last night's pots and pans on the drainer. Listener, please share a description of your kitchen now. The story starts here. Kerry switches on the radio. Their song, hers and his. She can't escape it. Kerry has just got home. She's wearing her coat. It is black with the fur around the hood. On the inside it's scruffy, ripped. It looks fine on outside. The coat is heavy. Listener, if you feel comfortable to, close your eyes. Feel the weight of the coat on your shoulders. Listen to Kerry's kettle boil. Kerry makes a brew. She looks around the kitchen. It's a mess. See the makeup on the counter from when she rushed to leave the house this morning. The bills everywhere. Empty beer cans, crushed and left on the side. Flowers in a vase on the window ledge, two weeks old, wilted from the last time. Kerry walks to the table. Broken eggs on the floor. Spag ball down the side of the cupboard. A smashed dinner plate. She'll clean it up in a minute. Her ribs are sore. A strong smell of a bleach. Air freshener, burn food, stale alcohol. What did they say at the hospital? Is everything okay? 
Why are you answering your phone? Are you doing this on purpose? Bitch! Carrie has a mirror in a kitchen. Listener, I invite you to go to a mirror in your home. Look at yourself. Describe what you see. Very smooth, smiley and saggy. Smiley eyes that water when they're happy and when they're sad. Green eyes, smiley face, always friendly, with a good skin. Lived in, knackered. I stopped wearing makeup and people think there's something wrong with me. It's a friendly face, warm eyes and a warm smile. Puffy, pale and tired. I look serious all the time. My eyebrows are okay and they're natural. Round, blue eyes, a slightly crooked nose. Small scar on my forehead and on my nose from chicken pox as a child. Old scars from multiple piercings on my eyebrows, lips and nose. Kerry sees a fractured eye socket. Blue, black, red, swollen. Listener, I invite you to choose a hard chair. Sit down. Picture... A hospital waiting room. The walls are blue. Your chair is plastic and connects to the chairs on either side. It's uncomfortable. There are other people waiting too. The story starts here. Kerry is waiting. She wants her x-ray results. There's a magazine next to her. She's read it from cover to cover. Somebody else left it there. She stands up and paces. What time is it? How long has she been waiting? She needs to tidy up before the kids get back. Kerry looks at her phone. No signal. But... Feel Kerry's heart race. Should she go outside and try to get a signal? Will she have missed calls? She sees a poster on the wall. The words, it's not love. She could get out now. She just has to tell somebody. Does your partner belittle you? Do they blame you for arguments? Would her kids be taken? Two women a week are killed by a current or former partner in England and Wales alone. If she stays, would she be a statistic? Get the kids out, never go in the kitchen during a fight. The shame for them. That's your mum. Your dad did that. Where would they live? What if she then realised she'd made a mistake? It would be too late. See the other people in the waiting room. Can they see the bruise? The shame. Hello, love. A blue uniform, older than Kerry, motherly. She has kind eyes. Please don't ask questions. Would you like a brew, love? She'd love a brew. Why have they only asked her? Has she been singled out? If she has a brew, she might speak. Tell the kindness too much. Open a can of worms. She might involve the police. Does she want her to? She's damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. Who is she kidding? No, thank you. I'm all right. Listener, I invite you to look at a photo of yourself when you were younger. What do you see? Full of life, confident and outgoing, always at a party or the pub, not a care in the world. I had half an inch of her all over my head, pink with blonde at the front. It's a Sunday and I'm in my friend's hairdressers eating chicken and chips after a day out. Completely free. Boys were just for a lift home. Curly hair. Always happy. Soul of the party. Surrounded by happiness, joy and laughter. I'm outside my friend's house with three of my mates, having drinks while getting ready to go into town. That was the best part. I'm wearing a purple strappy top and a mini skirt. My mouth is wide and I'm half bent over laughing. I'm 19, on holiday. There's a ripple across the picture from the sunlight. I'm in a colourful dress, more colourful than I'd wear at home. 
I really pull it off. I was all right, you know. The story starts here. Kerry's been tagged in old photos by a school friend. A special occasion. A good time. She looked so happy, glowing, before she met the dad of her eldest two. She'd never wear a hair like that now. It looked lovely. Dancing, singing karaoke, all those friends. When was she last able to message them back? Making a laugh out every weekend. She doesn't recognise herself. Listener, look up from the bright colourful photos. The room is dark and grey. What are you looking at? She passes him the tablet. Didn't you look good in those days? He bangs a can of coke on the table to make his point. Look what the dad did to you. He destroyed you. I saved you. You were nothing. What are you doing while I'm at work? Taking a picture of me. What are you hiding? Why have you got passwords on your apps? So the kids can't use my phone and spend a fortune buying games. Breathe. Kerry sends the kids upstairs. Everything's fine, don't worry. It's my fault. Like a can of coke, you can only shake it for so long before it explodes. Listener, I invite you to sit at a table. Rest. Exhale fully. It's Friday night. The end of a long week. You can relax. Have fun. The story starts here. It's just Kerry and the kids tonight. Peace. Her youngest, Archie, sits in a high chair and she spoon-feeds him his tea. (laughs) The room is warm, the oven glowing. There's a pizza cooking, chicken and sweet corn, her favourite. Her two eldest lads are playing video games in the front room. Your tea's ready! Kerry goes into them. It's dark, only the light from the TV. How about we all watch a film together? (laughs) Go on, your choice. Keep it down, will you? You don't want the neighbours complaining. No, not want the neighbours complaining. Come and get your tea. Lewis and Liam race to the kitchen. Liam gives her a look. What's this? They didn't have pepperoni. I thought it'd be nice for a change. He pushes past her. I'm not eating that. Well, then you'll have to go hungry. Oh, here we go. Are you going in the mood again? Oi, don't speak to mum like that. Oh, what? Little Archie's watching. Liam is about to throw the pizza at the wall. She grabs his wrist. Don't you ever. She looks into his eyes. His dad's eyes look back at her. Listener, I invite you to go to your fridge. Open it. What's in your fridge? Milk, vegetables, a salad drawer full of colour, cheese, a variety of sauces and a lonely packet of minced beef. Bread, milk, some leftover tea from last night, some jam, some foreign food because we've just been shopping and some vodka. It's the cleanest it's ever been. Eggs, a lettuce that's seen better days, my favourite cranberry and Wensleydale cheese my mum bought me, butter, mushrooms and marmalade. Cheese, spring onions, milk, orange juice, loads of horseradish, mint sauce, ketchup, all the condiments known to man. Heinz ketchup, milk, bacon, apple juice, beer in the bottom, a night of date yoghurt and a half-eaten tin of beans and sausage in the door. The story starts here. In Kerry's fridge, there is a new bottle of wine. Fresh flowers in a vase on the window ledge. He wants to feel forgiven. Her stomach lurches. He calls it make-up sex. That's not what she calls it. 
another part of her dies. Listener, Kerry is going to her bedroom now. If you're comfortable too, I invite you to please make your way to a bedroom too. On Kerry's bedside table, a photo of the two of them on a night out, arms around each other. She remembers feeling safe. After everything with Lewis and Liam's dad, this felt different. Next to it, a photo of the kids. She feels like a shit mum. Kerry catches herself in the mirror. Listener, I invite you to please look again at the mirror in your home. You've done this before, haven't you? Does it feel like life is on repeat? See the bruise around her eye? Can nobody else see it? Do the neighbours hear nothing? Is everyone turning a blind eye? At her feet is a packed suitcase. See the suitcase? She packed it ages ago. She knows that this time she has to see it through. She picks up the suitcase. Who is that? The neighbour? School. Police? Social services? She knows she has to leave. Is this it? What about the kids? There's no way back. What will she do? Listener, what should she do? The story starts here. The story starts here. The story starts here. The story starts here. The story has so many starts. But where does it end? Listener, this is the end of the audio experience. Please pause, take a breath and give yourself time to leave it behind. This was a Made by Mortals production, performed and created from the imaginations and experiences of Francesca and the We Hear You women, Angela, Jill, Joanne, Lana and Leanne. It was funded by the Ideas Fund, British Science Association and Wellcome Trust. <laughs>